G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a Land Rover Discovery 2011 model, 3 litre, turbo diesel, and the transmission has the floating shift issue. Also, the owner was mentioning that the temperature, high temperature light came on when he was up the bush a couple of weeks back as well. One of the first things to make sure is that your battery is fully charged and strong. All your connections, all that sort of business is all up to scratch. Your earth strap connections are good. You know, there's nothing obvious there with the transmission. But the way the computers work, they can only measure electrical issues or electrical uh, outside electrical parameters that have been programmed into the TCM. The computer can't generally sense issues like leaking solenoids. Now on these particular transmissions or vehicles, or the Land Rover Discoveries, they have what's called a jacking mode. If you start jacking things or lifting things, you might find that the whole vehicle lowers itself down on onto you and it can crush you or uh, damage some of your equipment or do damage to something. So please be aware of that and make sure you do any repairs or inspections safely. So this one's already had the upgrade kit on the pan if it didn't have the plastic pan I'm not sure and to get the we're removing the valve body so we might even need to take off this exhaust to be able to get the valve body and the pan off what you can try is undo this bolt here and then jack up the back of the transmission that'll move it away from that cross member at the rear and also this one at the front it'll lift it up so you've just got a little bit more room to maneuver it but before you start any work like that just make sure you give it a good clean get any loose road dirt or anything like that out of the way before you start pulling things apart now to be able to get more access here you can remove these two bolts this one up here too on this bracket and take this bolt out and then you can jack up the transfer case until it hits the floor and that'll give you a little bit more room in here if you still can't get it off then we might have to take this rear cross member off and this piece of the exhaust and also over here we have it looks like fuel line going right past the, the mechatronic case connector sleeve we need to get that out to be able to get the valve body out. We ended up taking off the two bolts of the left side cro rear cross member and that bolt and it was able to come down enough to get that pan out. And if you have a look, solenoid set we need uh, three yellow, two blue and two orange. So they do have different uh, colour coded solenoid sets that you need. You can also see as per usual there's a, a heap of fine met metallic swarf on the range sensor. Bit of manoeuvring around those cross members and the exhaust. And there we go, if you see those tube seals they're pretty much flat with the case. They're supposed to be protruding a little bit and they're flat so there would have been no tension on those rubber seals to seal the join between the case and the valve body and the same would go with that bridge seal there. Now while you've got the valve body out it's always good practice to just give all the clutches a air pressure test while you've got the valve body out. Now we're just on the Land Rover Discovery uh, shop manual there. You can see all the numbered solenoids and the mechatronic plate and they actually call the solenoids the EPRS or electronic pressure regulator solenoid and they're the associated 
numbers corresponding to the which solenoid does what. Here we have the solenoid operation chart in each of the gears and below that we have the clutch and brake, they, they're still clutches but they call it a brake uh, application chart. And here we are on a, another diagram, the ATSG manual and it shows the position of where all those clutch packs are and there's their identification of each clutch pack and what's a, which one's applied in which gear. The location of all the solenoids there. Again on the ATSG manual there's the operation chart for the solenoids and the respective clutch air pressure test port locations you can see there and over here if you have a look there's, there is a warning there that do not air check the D1 clutch through the D2 passage the D2 cancel circuit for the D1 clutch piston this helps to reduce the D1 clutch it acts like a balance piston or a cushion so it can be damaged if you check that or air pressure test it so be aware of that as well got the valve body out now to get the mechatronic plate off we're going to take off these two bolts here uh, which one's these two and there's two over here You've got to be very careful flipping these over, you don't damage anything. And I'm just going to carefully pry that mechatronic plate off the valve body. But you have to be very careful you don't damage these surfaces where the seals sit. Here, here and over here. And also where those uh, pins connect into the solenoids, they'll be hanging on as well. You want to take the mechatronic plate off nice and evenly. You don't want to crack the plastic or anything like that if you're going to reuse it, which we are. And if you put a new mechatronic plate on, you'll have to get it reflashed at the dealership. coming up slowly and it usually hangs on where those pins are There's one pin over here and one over here and on the solenoids and just slowly pry it up and another thing is you've got to let this cool right down before you even start doing this if you're going to reuse the the plastic mechatronic plate or Sometimes the plastic can distort and then cause new issues. There we go. You can see it is fairly flimsy when it comes off. Like that. Put that in a safe place. Now I've just loosened all these. Torx plus 25. If you just try and take them off with the rattle gun or your tech gun, you'll damage, definitely damage the little star in the Torx head and the bolt. Now yeah, starting from where the selector is, over here, you've got to make a note of ex the exact colour code that goes in these. You'll notice, probably if you've watched some other videos of ours, 
Uh, we have the 6HP26 transmission. Usually has three yellow, three blue, and a black solenoid. These ones have got three yellow, two blue, and two orange. Another issue that can happen with these is sometimes, depending on the, the fluid that's been in it or the age of the transmission, these can turn into a colour that you might not be able to distinguish. You might think that these are orange or brown. I don't know, that's brown to some people and orange to others. You need to do a little bit of research on that and make sure you've got the right solenoid set. So we've got yellow, blue, yellow, yellow, blue, orange, orange. And you can see the, the O-rings have flattened out. You won't get a fault code for a leaking solenoid. You'll only get a fault code for an electrical issue with the solenoid. So you've got to also be aware of that. Okay, we've got the brand new ZF 6HP28 solenoid set. They come with an instruction manual, shows you how to the tension sequence. And you've got your solenoids. You'll also note that electronic parts, they're not returnable if they're open. So why would you return them if you haven't at least tried them? And found that you've got a problem so that's always in dispute with me but anyway we'll start off with the yellow one and when you are pushing it in don't just push it straight in there is a nice chamfer there but occasionally it can nip off the solenoid or break the plastic or something like that if you just try and force it straight in so what we do is we push it in, put tension on it, and just slowly rotate it. And it'll hopefully find its own little way in there. There you go. Next one's a blue one. Two yellows. blue and two orange ones now the old ones are probably more more brown you can see these are probably more orange And the difference with these solenoids, apart from the resistance in them and the way they operate, some are normally open, some are normally closed. So now we're just going to line up as best we can like that. And we're going to put the bracket on and leave it slightly loose, just so when we put the plate back on, it'll find its own little position that it sits in. We'll give them a little bit of a wiggle left and right and they'll find their own natural sitting position. Occasionally uh, what can happen with these, these are spring steel, you can bend these down a little bit just so they're pushing the solenoid tighter up against the valve body. Sometimes you'll find that when you put this in the solenoid can actually move in and out like that and what can happen when it's operating under pressure the solenoids constantly moving in and out one it'll wear out the o-ring on it and not seal properly in time and two that little nose piece can end up getting a little crack in it so you want to just make sure there's tension pushing down on those and if you have a look they'll all be like I usually line them up like that and you can just see some will be 
like bent out a little bit and don't go crazy with it otherwise yeah you can end up breaking so I've tensioned it a little bit put it in the vise and just with a shifter you just sort of bend it a little bit and just check it line them up all like that so they're all in a line and I can feel that's see, it's going in a lot firmer so it's not enough where I have to force it on but enough that it's going to be holding those solenoids in a little bit better okay I've brought up these bolts up to it but I haven't tightened them yet and we're going to just wriggle that when we get the mechatronic plate back on and then we'll tighten them last got the range sensor there you can see it's fully contaminated on both sides so to get that out we just flex flex that pin and slide it out slowly or carefully Okay. You can see how much metal is on the speed sensor there too. So you clean them up on this one. And it's a good idea to just blow everything out. Sometimes you might need to give it a bit of a wipe with the rag because uh, sometimes because it's magnetic the metallic swarf won't or debris won't sort of blow off it just ends up moving somewhere else so I'll give this a bit of a clean and make sure you blow out all those little nooks and crannies as well carefully very carefully so you don't damage anything Catronic plates nice and clean we slide this back in carefully good idea to try and flex that a little bit just so it doesn't scrape through there we go clean the sensors and now we can carefully oh one other thing that range sensor there you need to make sure you align it with the selector as you're pushing it in as well Just carefully and evenly push it down otherwise you will damage that plastic and now over here where those solenoids are I'm just sort of pushing it down just so they all push into those things as I carefully and evenly press down where those pins are Sometimes it's a little bit tight on those pins. Carefully flip it over. Bolts back in. Okay, we've tensioned them up made sure that the selectors lined up on the range sensor just wriggle these solenoids just so they find their own little natural spot just be careful you don't damage that fork as well Okay, they're all sitting nicely and now I can tighten up these. Tighten them all up. Double check your work as you work when you're doing stuff that's unfamiliar. And now we can get ready to put the tube seals and the bridge seals up on the valve body. Now to get the tube seal out, you just get your screwdriver, poke it in about halfway, sort of twist it like that. And then you can just slide it out like that. It just creates a little bit of a grip. 
important not to damage any of the alloy surfaces there on the case. They do get stuck in there. Some people, I believe, try with circlip pliers, but you end up just squat opening the rubber up and it just grips harder, so you... it's probably the only way to do it. There we go, all done. Now, out of interest, I'll just measure how collapsed they actually are. The two shorter, these are the older ones, or the old tube seals. 980 970 on that one the new ones what's that inch and 15 there the other one About an inch and 15 as well. So you can see how much it was compressed. Then you've got a, a medium length one, which is that one. One inch and 170. I've got one inch and 230. And you'll also note that these have like this little coating on there. The idea of that is, is as you tension or tension up the valve body, if that's rubber, sometimes the rubber will grip. That's just like a nice slippery surface. So as you're tensioning it, it won't, it can slide. It's not going to get stuck on the rubber. And quite often you will find that these tube seals are stuck on the valve body. You can see these ones, they don't have that little coating on there. It might have already been changed at some stage. Aftermarket job. So what did we say? That one's... Inch 230. And the long one... Is... inch and 535 and the new one inch 610 so you can see they'll definitely have more tension sealing between the case and the valve body and one other thing because these tube seals are uh, actually sealing on the uh, center support, which is a round unit. You'll notice that on some of them, the rubber probably even compresses on a, it'll have like a little concave angle on the rubber. You can notice it. Sometimes a bit hard to see, but. The short ones that are um, in the middle, it sort of sits a little bit flatter, but as it goes out to the medium one, and then especially that long one, it'll have like a like an arc on it. And we've also got the bridge seal. The bridge seal plastic, these occasionally will crack. And they'll usually crack where the where the join is. And on the different ZF models the width of that plastic part is different so you want to just confirm that you've got the right one and it's only probably about a mil out 1560 that one I'm just measuring the plastic the new one 1564 65 so Five thousand wouldn't be oh, that one's sixty-two, three three thousand. If you're talking like 
something like 30, 40 thou, that would be different. So, actually what I'll do first, I'll measure the whole, whole overall width. 668, let's call it 70. Six hundred and fifty, and the new one overall seven hundred and thirty. I've already forgotten what what the other one was. Six seventy, seven thirty. So about sixty there. Another thing we can do is just, I'll just pop one out there. That's the old one. Just a seal on its own, it's pretty flattened out. 285. Was it 285? And that is when it likes to focus 310. So about 25 there. Make sure we've got the new one. There we go. So I'm going to put a bit of assembly gel on there just so it holds up. In the case the tube seals sometimes they go in tight sometimes they go in a bit looser but you can put a bit of assembly gel on there as well the assembly gel or vaseline or petroleum jelly same thing we've got the high temperature one in the in the warmer months it's handy in the cooler months it doesn't matter so much but um, as that starts to warm up it'll just dissolve and you will have no more gel left anyway Just locates on there. Sometimes the plastic will hold it on anyway. Got the, the longest one goes on the outside. You can see it is sticking up or sticking out of the case a little bit. And you got the second longest one. Sometimes you don't have this, there's no seal here, there'll just be those two and the middle one, depending what transmission it is. And the 6R80s, they won't have that one. Alright, and you can see that's going to seal a lot better, there's probably about 2 mil there. It's going to actually create a little rubber tension to press down on that. One other thing to watch out for is when you're putting the valve body up, especially when it's confined space like this, we don't have a lot of room, make sure you line up the selector, otherwise you're going to have to loosen the whole thing again and, and put it back up. Where the mechatronic sleeve, case connector sleeve goes through, make sure it's nice and clean. Now it is a little bit awkward to get that valve body through, um, especially because you've got those sensors of poking through, so you want to make sure it's in the right position. And don't forget to line up your selector here or you'll have to lower the valve body again to, to put it in. When you're putting all the bolts in, try and put them in evenly and tension them up. 
and now we've got to push in the sleeve the case connector sleeve I put a white paper or liquid paper mark on the bottom end because it's a little bit hard to see uh, the position of that tang which should be at about five o'clock push that in push the little fork up uh, we've bolted up the valve body as well tensioned it up and there we go you do have to push it in slightly under tension and there isn't a lot of room there but we've got it in and the forks up marking the bottom side is definitely helpful it just shows you where the five o'clock mark is for that little tang a little bit of oil on the filter seal goes over this way a little bit you've got those little legs yeah that have to line up so you've got to come down that's it yeah, just push it up yep got the pan nice and clean adding a neodymium magnet to it important to find a uh, position where it's not going to be in the way of anything now the magnet's nice and clean and we're putting one of these aluminium rubber pan gaskets or seals and this one's out of a 6R80 transmission they fit on these to get the pan in you've got to go sideways that way and slowly maneuver it in and there it is there a little bit difficult getting it over this front and rear cross member and you've got the exhaust in the way as well but make sure you don't get any road dirt in the pan or on that gasket when you're putting it in now it's important to put all the bolts in before you start tightening it up and there is a sequence but basically you know you just try and uh, do it up evenly okay we've got everything back together just make sure you double check your work uh, all the bolts are nice and tight if you, you, you would have had to remove at least this side of the cross member to get access to the pan um, there's little little brackets of things that you would have had to loosen or take off so double check your work and now we're ready to fill it the fill plug is just over here on the right hand side just above the pan rail at the rear of the transmission and you can see that it's got the steel pan conversion kit on it already um, you'll only probably get a couple of liters in so you've got to do it in stages start it for a moment pump the oil through into the transmission turn it off fill it up till it's coming out of there again and you'll have to do that uh, you'll probably get approximately uh, what is it about eight completely empty is about 10 liters I think about eight liters will fit in it and then you can keep the motor running and you can see this one's still got the sticker on it lifetime oil which is a load of rubbish they do need servicing and you've got to get it to between 30 and 50 degrees 56 to 122 Fahrenheit okay we've got seven liters in there and it just started coming out so now we've got to get it up to that temperature because the oil will expand with heat you don't want to overfill it but you want to make sure you've got enough so you don't do any damage and we are using the Tritec lubricants which also is compatible with the ZF Lifeguard 6 and what temperature are we on? on 20 degrees and you can see it's just starting to come out there now so we've probably put a little bit too much in there seven and a half litres we put in seven litres might have been alright that oil is just starting to come out because it's warming up and expanding and what temperature are we on? 29 29 degrees
29 on the scan tool and showing 27. So it's in the ballpark, even with these digital thermometers. And we're on 33 degrees. And it should just have a nice thin stream coming out like that. Important to not overfill it because that oil, expanded oil, can hit the spinning parts and aerate the oil. There we go, we've got about 35 degrees there, got the plug back in. Be careful you don't burn yourself on the exhaust. And we're back from a road test. No floating shifts. We got it up to about 75 degrees on the scan tool. Uh, there's no floating shifts in 5th and 6th. And it seems to be shifting a little bit firmer as well, right through the, the whole uh, upshifting and downshifting range. Uh, definitely those tube seals and the bridge seal were flattened out between the valve body and the case and also the, the o-rings on the solenoids were flattened out and possibly leaking as well especially when the oil warms up and thins out. Solenoids would have definitely been contaminated with metallic uh, debris and possibly leaking. Anyway I hope that information helps don't forget to like and subscribe, leave any comments or suggestions in the section below. Shared knowledge is always a good idea. And don't forget to throw me a beer if any of this information helps. Uh, much appreciated, keeps us motivated. The link's found in the description where you can send me some beers or coffee if you prefer. Thank you for watching.